From the morning's reading, SPX's inability to string together a couple of winning days has reached historic proportions. Early April has typically been a bullish time from a seasonality standpoint. And evidence is moderately bullish, the market is still oversold, this suggests a bit of an upside edge. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 7.14 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day, March the 30th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's dive in and see what happened in our overnight action. Well, in the U.S. broad market indices, all four of them up nicely, about half a percent, with uh, perhaps the NASDAQ being a tad bit more bullish than the others at about two-thirds of a percent. You also have crude oil moving. Crude oil was down about 1.5% at the time of this cut. Uh, Euro was down about 0.6%. Bonds down a little bit, about a quarter of a percent, and then you have gold down pretty significantly at down at about 1.4%. So um, pretty big movement for a Sunday night across all four of these, uh, all eight of these futures markets. And in terms of overseas action, China up big, up 2.59%, Hong Kong up 1.5%. Japan up 0.65%. Uh, Europe, not to be uh, left out, was also up nicely. Germany up 1.4%. And the United Kingdom up about 0.4%. So pretty um, bullish activity across both our own broad market indices as well as overseas markets coming into today's action. In terms of macroeconomic reports, there is a full slate of reports both globally and United States for this week so you need to be aware of that in terms of today specifically we've got a couple orange flag reports um, before the market opens that got core PCE price index personal spending couple orange flag reports we had during the market trading hours pending home sales and we got an FOMC member speaking this evening. In terms of Tuesday, I don't have Tuesday on here because Monday was so long. So that's what we've got for that right now. In terms of uh, our volatility, uh, obviously this has been um, seesawing back and forth just like the market. And really we have to kind of say it's kind of a neutral stance or more uh, appropriate term might be a range bound because the market's been looking like it's entering into a new range much like it did during um, the end of last year uh, we seem to be bouncing between a new range and the volatility is going to reflect that as well in general volatility is still relatively low or VIX even when these uh, big down days have occurred have never um, popped above an 18 the short-term VIX right now is a 14.69 our historic IV percentiles you see for all four broad market indices are still in the lower um, roughly third so nothing to get excited about uh, obviously this um, big big day I think this was last um, it's been last Wednesday when we had three standard deviation moves and the Russell and the NASDAQ and then two standard deviation moves and the S&P and Dow starting to fade a little bit um, clearly was not following follow through on more bearish action following those big down days nor could you really claim that there was a significant bounce so um, that's of some interest we have broken out of this pattern of alternating days uh, we had I think it was like nine trading days where we had uh, on the S&P a standard deviation move followed by an inside day followed by a standard deviation move it went back and forth back and forth 
Uh, that has broken down, but we still seem to be exhibiting much of a range-bound kind of activity. In terms of our daily report, there's a few changes here um, for today's action. Gold contract should have rolled over. You should be on the new gold contract at this point if you are trading futures. And i um, trying to think if there's anything this week. I don't think there's anything this week. I'll have to double check that and we'll take a look at that tomorrow. Uh, market trend intermediate term phase opinion. We still remain at phase three looking for higher highs and higher lows though the better description is we're probably in a range until broken out one side or the other. Portfolio investor posture, uh, obviously a couple flags here. IBD status still remains as uptrend under pressure. GMI index did improve one notch to a three out of six and the buy signal did remain. The GMI index was in um, danger of falling out of that buy signal. We had just enough um, coming in on Friday to retain that buy signal. But that should say something to you as well. The fact that it is borderline um, getting ready to fall out of a buy signal along with this IBD status should tell you something about the current investor posture. Active trader market posture is bearish and would not encourage new initiation of short term or intermediate term bullish trades. From position sizing opinions, we have on the investor position sizing opinion up to 50% depending on how current positions are acting from a volatility standpoint and mostly focus for those active trader positions. We have still remained within that 12 to 18 VIX. So um, that gives us uh, permission to go as much as 100%. So a little bit of a differing opinion there um, between those two postures. From a market posture standpoint with respect to the four broad market indices, uh, we are bearish. And you see with all four of these markets, you know, well below 80 and in some cases below 50. Um, this is an important threshold when S&P drops below 50. The Dow's also drop below 50. So for the two um, uh, markets there, you have... Um, really starting to turn into quite bearish. If it drops below a 20, we would go very bearish in our definition. Um, NASDAQ has held up a bit better, and Russell, as you see, is perhaps the, have, in a relative terms, has been the most, um, most bullish, but obviously it is now in a bearish stance itself. Market timing opinion for today is bullish, um, we're a bit over um, sold and that does put a bit of an edge to um, the bulls on the one day and three day short term outlook. So be aware of that and look for signs of potential bouncing. Hedge warning status does remain as level one, our yellow light or breaks. Um, and you can see there's plenty of justification for that. From our volatility based metrics, we still have market and decline warnings. And we also have a sharp increase warning. Uh, current distribution day stands at seven for S&P and NASDAQ, clearly not a sign of a healthy bull market. Um, fixed phase, we'll really call this range bound at this point. Um, we are still looking for that intermediate term higher high. And, um, you know, recent action certainly has not helped uh, with this definition. You have on the one month New York Stock Exchange new highs, new lows. Friday we had 85 new highs to 162 new lows. And actually, uh, remember, we were looking for kind of the Yellen close as she was speaking just before the close. It turned out to be a bit of a yawner. No new information seemed to come out of it, and the market did not seem to... Um, have any significant response to that, at least during the, the few minutes uh, after those news reports came out and we had before the market closed. Risk off, you take a look at these intermarket risk um, indicators, we've got all five of them flagging as risk off. So another series of warnings as to where we are with our current uh, market tone. In terms of opinions, we still have for our option income strategies VIX within an acceptable window, so it's okay to initiate option income strategies. We do seem to be in a bit of a range. You have to be prepared, though, 
to um, and perhaps reduce position size on option income strategies because we've had so many of these um, you know relatively large standard deviation moves as we have oscillated within the range so depending on what your option income strategy is and how it's set up and what your posture is about adjustments uh, you can initiate positions but you've got to be prepared um, for uh, perhaps a bit more challenging environment than is um, currently um, present in, uh, in bull markets um, so that's something to take into mind. In terms of covered calls, especially if you're managing existing covered calls, an equal distribution between in the money and out of the money strikes would certainly be the most appropriate way to go. Initiation of new positions, I mean, covered call obviously is a bullish position unless you're doing a in the money only. And with the current market posture being bearish, uh, it would be very difficult um, to initiate a new position without having something really special coming together. So kind of keep that in mind. Put selling, that's probably the strategy that is most in alignment with the current market tone. Uh, if you get that spike down, selling puts against the core basket of stocks that you're willing to own and the position size that you're willing to own, you know, would certainly seem to be coming into play. In terms of point and figure. Well, let's take a look, quick look at the relative rotation graph. We've got a new one for the week. And you see um, there's not a lot of these that are just, you know, shooting towards this upper right-hand corner like you like to see, but perhaps the strongest XSD, FDN. Um, so our semiconductor, um, XBI, of course, we continue to watch it in terms of being one of the strongest sectors, but it is certainly has oscillated and given you some volatility of late. This one, especially IBB or XBI, depending on how you play this biotech, just understand this is a high beta, so it's going to very much genuflect, much like the broad market. If the broad market is up big, this one will be up even bigger. If the broad market is down, it will largely um, follow that to aggressively to the downside. So um, if you're playing this space, you've got to give more room for your premise to work. And that might need to be reflected in your market uh, position sizing of such a position. But in general, also semiconductors, also a high beta, home construction. These three have consistently been uh, amongst the um, highest performers of late and it certainly is reflected in this graph as well. In terms of point and figure, you notice, um, and I'll let the members take a deeper look at this, but um, dollar had a change, the uh, consumer discretionary and the developed markets, EFA, also had a change for this week. The other markets had no change in their point and figure um, postures. Sector market posture, you notice um, not a lot of health over here in the short and intermediate term. Only retail being able to hold up as up in its market posture across all the different time frames. Um, a lot of weakness came into this and the end of last week. So kind of keep that in mind. We have a percent change for Friday. Healthcare was the winner, and this has often been the case in recent weeks. Um, look also here, consumer staples, and that's probably the two that we'll point to. Um, energy, again, very difficult to say that you have found a bottom in energy. While the bottom may be getting hammered out in terms of a, um, a pattern for energy, it is certainly not um, over with and ready to just skyrocket to the moon. Um, you're going to have quite a ride on energy after this big, uh, big bear market that has occurred in that sector. In terms of industry groups, uh, you want to continue to focus on retail, internet, healthcare, especially the various aspects of healthcare, um, bi biotech, and then railroads all represented here in the top group of our industry group right now. 
So that should be enough for today. As always, greatly appreciate you liking us on YouTube and um, following us on the other social media platforms where we are present for you. Uh, as always, we greatly appreciate uh, your feedback, and you can send us emails at support at falconglobaltraders.com. Additional information, as always, is available on the website about our day trading products as well as our live trading rooms. Disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review this. And we greatly appreciate you each and every trading day in the Falcon Global Trading Community. We'll look forward to seeing you here, same place, tomorrow.